I tried recording this a few times, trying to figure out the best way to do it. So sorry if it's too long or if I ramble a little too much, but I'll try to do my best. So let's start with the first trick. Auto attack resets. E will reset your auto attack. This one's pretty straightforward. E will reset your auto attack, but when you're doing your combos, maybe sometimes your shumple will be up, but you kind of just have to do another auto. Like my shumple's up, I'm gonna auto, then do the auto attack reset to really get the most out of it. So clearing waves, three waves. The first way was the quick way. This one isn't the most common way. It's just when you're roaming or if no one's there and you just want to like push and roam or if you're in the sideline and you just want to kill the wave and get out of there, then it's a good one. But earlier in the match, if you just do it, you might not kill all the minions. So you kind of got to be careful. Because if you do this in lane and you have to like auto these minions down, you know, that's super awkward and you don't want to do that. So wait till the minions are a little bit lower or maybe if you get like a Q beforehand and then they'll be low enough and you can just, you know, you get the idea. So this is one you'll be using in lane the most because you know, you'll have an opponent who's trying to poke you and hit you with skill shots and whatever. And you're going to be jumping to the edges of your dagger to try to be as hard to punish as possible. So let me show you what that kind of looks like. Let's say the guy's like right here or whatever, right? You cue the minion. If you jump right here, it's going to be really easy to hit you. So you're going to jump like on the edge, right? Then move around into your minions. It's going to be hard to hit you. Right? You see how that's a lot harder to punish than just jumping in and trying to clear the whole wave like a dummy. So clearing minions under your tower, this one's a little bit harder to do, but it's not that hard. So when the wave is coming in, this guy's going to be trying to poke you. So you're just going to W here and you want to know where you're going to escape. So I'm going to escape to here, jump in, clear the minions and jump back. I didn't have enough damage here to clear them, but you know, when you're laning, maybe you hit these with like a Q to thin the wave a little bit. You do this because just coming up and auto attacking all these minions, it's just going to get you poked and yeah, not a good time. WE, uh, not much to it, you know. Just WE, you have to be really close to the wall. So like just click right on the wall, WE. If you W and then wait, you can pick up the dagger and you'll have your shampoo back up. If you don't, then you won't have your shampoo. Depending on the thickness of the wall, you can actually pick up your uh, dagger after the WE. Here, there you go. Yeah. So for that jungle plant jump, you need one close to the wall right here and you just click the far side. You can jump to this blast cone here, right? but you cannot do it on this side. So a lot of these jumps with the jungle monsters are just like lining it up with the wall and getting it over. Or with this one, if you get it close enough to the wall, you can just shumble to the far side and jump over. 
This one's actually easier to do than the red for some reason. So you queue this camp in like this general area. It's not very specific. Like I can just click around here, right? Then you walk down, jump over here. Like it's actually pretty consistent. This jump, this one was kind of just a flex, but I don't know if you want to go check out this jungle camp for some reason, uh, you can do that. So jumping off of people to go over the wall, it's just kind of like the junk plant up here in the river. So if someone's right next to the wall, you just jump to the far side of them and you go right over the wall. This right here, you might not get at first, but it's not that hard. So let's say you queue someone, right? And you accidentally make the dagger go over the wall. You can jump foot to the far side and still pick up the dagger. So the reason you E flash instead of flash E is uh, there's gonna be some time between your flash and your E, right? But if you E flash, once you flash, your E will buffer and it'll be instantly. But if you flash E, maybe you might do it a little too slow. Be careful because if you're out of range and you try to E flash, you'll do this weird stop and then you'll walk and then jump. It's really ugly. Like I pressed E flash right there at basically the same time and it just was really awkward. So stop watching Zonyas. If you buy your stopwatch and you don't end up using it and you upgrade the Zonyas, you can just buy your stopwatch again and you can just use both. You can only do that once a game because your stopwatch will stay broken. So the alt spider sense is kind of funny. So if you're playing against a team or something and they try to go invisible in the bush, you can just see them. Your alt will light up and you just ult. And you might even just kill them like that. You'll certainly surprise them and just scare them. Also, if you know someone's recalling and you're walking down maybe to like bot lane or something, it carries recalling in one of the bus in one of the bushes. You just walk down here, you spam R, and bam. So that shackle clip was kind of funny. It's really good against a Blanc because once she's under like 30 HP. She'll go invisible and you can watch the daggers travel and it'll give you a much better idea of who's who. So if she's walking in one direction, the clone's just going to walk like parallel or perpendicular rather to where she's walking. And it's kind of obvious unless they're super good at LeBlanc and they knew it was about to pop, then they could really trick you. But if you ult before it pops, you have a pretty good idea of who's who. So this one's the most important trick. So I recommend this trick a lot. Jumping to any side of the Shumpo is pretty straightforward. You know, from here, it doesn't seem like you're in range because you're out of, well, you're out of range, but you can just jump anyways. So when you're chasing someone, don't feel like you have to pick the close side because you just want to jump on them. You can pick the far side and it's like the same thing. It's also for like Baron or something. I don't know why you jump on the far side of Baron, but 
hey, maybe there's a really big Cho'Gath and you want to jump on the far side. Well, you can. So the Shumpo positioning. In this clip, I jumped right here on the pike. So that's really important because I knew he was going to like alter to something. So I wanted to jump on the far side because if I jumped on the other side, I would have just gotten hit by the ult and died. So by optimal reset usage, I pretty much just mean using your abilities before you get a reset. So that Q, W, E, I forgot to write an E here, but it doesn't really matter. It's just the W reset W. It was a really small time to get the extra W in. And I pretty much just spam W when I jumped in on him. And you know, sometimes spamming is good because it's hard to get all those W's in when you're getting resets really fast. So just spitting out your spells and using every reset you can was basically the point I was trying to make with this trick. And that's a lot harder to do than it sounds in some situations. So this Q, right, I got the reset. I didn't, I could have queued this cane and I would have had like four daggers here. So that's a slight misplay on me. The Kraken target selection is pretty interesting. So one target and two targets, it's pretty like clear, you know, one target, you ult them. It's just going to hit that one guy you ult. Two targets, it's going to split evenly. But at three, it's interesting. At three, it depends on how many stacks of Kraken you have already built up. So here I have zero stacks of Kraken. You can see my status bar. I haven't autoed or anything at all. So at zero stacks, it's going to hit the furthest target from me. This one's the furthest target. So bam, you can see this one took the most damage. I walk up. Now the bottom one is the furthest. He's going to take the most damage. So you see that crack and proc on him. So here, zero stacks. Furthest target. Right, look how different that damage is. 14, 29, because he's taking most of the Kraken procs. So now I'm gonna have one stack. And you would get that from like a Shumpo ult or something. Here I just autoed, I'm at one stack. I ult, it's gonna be the middle target, right? So E auto ult is kind of interesting now because if you jump in a team fight and you want to kill the guy you shampoo on, you can just E auto ult or you EW and it'll hit the guy in the middle and then it'll switch once the dagger lands. But here, here the E auto ult is going to give me two stacks and then I ult. So it will hit the closest target. So the point I was trying to make with this trick was knowing exactly how your shampoo works. So right now you see it has 11.36 second cooldown and picking up the dagger reduces it by 9.5. So when I pick up a dagger, 11.36 minus 9.5 is 1.86 seconds. So we see that it's gonna be 1.8. It just rounds up to two, but you know, so that's pretty long. But if you shampoo right after you throw a dagger, that time where you're already shampooed waiting for the dagger to fall, that still counts. So when you QE and pick up the dagger, it's almost up because the dagger takes over a second to fall. So if you just QE, your Shumpo cooldown will be really low. And that also works with the EW. 
And so the double dagger, you know, obviously 11.36, whatever, minus 9.5 twice is way lower than zero. So your shuffle will just be up. Right? That's just the point I wanted to make. You know, it seems really simple, but you know, knowing why it works is important. So the cube minion aggro range is kind of important because if someone gets out of line, you want to know that you can just like kill them and you won't take any minion aggro, right? And that was kind of the biggest point. Someone getting out of line, you can just kill them. You won't take minion aggro. Or if like you're kind of far from the minions, you can kill them and just like walk backwards. And let's say you're here, you kill them, jump away. And yeah, you'll be safe. I got hit by one there, but you know, it's mostly for people getting out of line or walking up too far. The bouncing cube is pretty straightforward, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I need to expand on that. Just try to find cool cues and you won't take me in aggro. So adaptive damage, this one I could talk forever on and it probably wouldn't be a very interesting video. But let me explain it a little bit. So Pike has a shitload of armor and Cassidy takes less magic damage. So it makes more sense to make AP against Pike and AD against Cassidy. All right, that's pretty simple to understand. But I picked a straightforward example on purpose. So it can get really questionable on some matchups. Another champ that stands out with low armor is Oriana. Super low armor. And she's probably going to take MR against you. So AD is really good against her. So this page, I think I need to explain a little bit more. So basically, depending on your starting item, that changes the adaptive damage that you get, right? So if I go Doran's Blade, I'm gonna have 98 AD because the adaptive is changing to AD. So it's not just that 8 AD from the item, it's the 10 AD from runes. But if I instead go Dark Seal, it's not just the 15 AP from the item. It's the 18 AP from the runes. And that's giving me 33 AP. So that comes into play with not only your starting item, but your, like your build path too. This is why Gunblade was really good. You could go long swords and then switch to AP really easily. But now you kind of just have this weird choice with like your starting item and then you switch once you start building your first item on like your first back. One more consideration is your keystone. So Electrocute right now, it's actually dealing physical damage. And as we saw earlier, a physical damage Electrocute will deal less damage to Pike than a magic damage Electrocute. And against Cassidy, you probably want that physical damage Electrocute. Like a AP Conqueror wouldn't be as good against Pike as a physical Electrocute would be against Oriana. But against Cassidy, you probably want a physical conqueror because you auto attack them a lot. Whereas Oriana, you know, you don't get as very many auto attacks. That's kind of complicated. Maybe I'm too rambly on that, but uh, I hope you get the idea. So this one, my friend Matt showed me literally the other day. I didn't even know this existed. So if you hit the blast cone, you can just do this dagger switch at any point during the blast cone. And it just cancels it. And it's kind of good because let's say, I don't know. It's just good. Normally you'd have to like QSS to act immediately, but you can just do the toggle and then jump on someone. You cannot toggle during combat. 
so yeah that's something to note so it's kind of reduced in its usage because of that but I don't know man it's still good so this one's pretty straightforward you can see me click backwards here and then alt the Cassiopeia won't see you click backwards and she'll be super confused when her alt doesn't stun you and she'll probably flash or just die from sheer confusion. The W and E ignoring unit collisions, it's uh, sometimes useful, sometimes not that useful. My biggest use out of it is often me getting stuck on Krugs, right? Cause these Krugs, man. I can't get stuck here right now. Come on, get me stuck. Well, if you play jungle at all, or you know, farmed your jungler's camps or the enemy's camps, you've probably gotten stuck on Krugs before. You know, you can just W or Shumpo and you're home free. But you probably shumpo over the wall to even get stuck in the first place. So yeah, just W and you're free, you're free to go. It's also useful against something like Lux or Ari when they want to throw skill shots at you and you're kind of just moving inside and out of them and it's like super awkward. One more thing to note about this is uh, I don't have a clip of it, but Nami and Sona, their ults don't really hit right on top of them. So if you jump on them like right in their face and they ult like this, they can ult forward it's gonna miss you. Like, if you're in this position, Sona and Nami cannot hit you whatsoever. And it's like really dumb looking. I'm not sure who else's ult works like that, but Nami and Sona are the ones that pop out top of my head. Nami, Sona. This trick is super complicated. Maybe not too much to explain, but I made two different videos on this. Those will be in the description if you want to check those out, but I'm not going to explain them here. Okay, I'll explain them slightly. So the easiest way to do it is you have two daggers on the floor. You pick one up, then you E-flash. All right. I don't want to explain why that worked, but that's how you do it. All right, so me and Dematerializer, it heals based on your Omnivamp. So right now, I have 1% Omnivamp, so it will not heal shit, right? Well, that was some, f okay, that was kind of awkward because of the level up. Um, boom, 34, right? That's like nothing. But let's say I buy Ravenous, and let's pretend I actually had this stacked up. So, you know, one plus two per stack. If I had max stacks, that'd be like 11. So let's just buy this, which is 10 and actually less than 11. And let's see how much it goes for. Wait, let me damage myself real quick. Oh shoot. Oh, what? All right. I think the minions have more health because it's like super ultra late game. Save them till 50 minutes and they're pretty darn good. So the double cat alt, there's not too much explanation to it. You know, you use alt and then Cancel it and ult again super quick. Use ult, you click and you ult again. Right, there's one ult, one ult, that one's two. You can tell it kind of sounds different. It's kind of tricky to see because you don't always get that weird sound. You can see the DPS, right? Staying around like 400. And if it shoots up dramatically, that's when I'll have the double ult. Right, that's like clearly faster. 
So to do the double alt without Cloud Drakes, you need your alt to have a low enough cooldown for it to make sense. So at 40 seconds, you will need a triple kill to fully refund it. So if you alt, get a triple kill, and then alt again, then that's how you could do it in a match without Cloud Drakes. Or you could do it in Earth. But yeah. Really weird trick. So I thought this trick was patched out and it actually isn't for some reason. And it's not hard to do. You go out of range, E Zonius, and then you flash. I'm not pressing anything here. Watch. Flash. Bam. It works every time. You just want to get slightly out of E range, E Zonius, and then you flash. Yeah. How useful is it? Well, I mean, it'd be a pretty cool escape. Definitely a clip. That's definitely a clip for sure. If you can pull that off. I don't know, pretty cool trick. If you watch all of this, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. I'm thinking of doing one similar to these two videos of but with combos instead of tricks. So let me know if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.